Cancer Head Cross Watchers. Welcome to Project Fed Taryn Moore. I'm Sharon, your intuitive empath, and I'm going to be giving you guys your long awaited love reading for the month of May. So I have decided to um, approach spirit and basically say that because you guys waited so long, we would do an extra special reading. Um, we were just waiting for some shifts in energy, okay? There were definitely some things. Um, that you guys have been mulling over, obviously, right? You guys have been in this state almost, I want to use the word emotionally catatonic, <laughs> like almost paralyzed, not from fear, but just from literally an exhaustion is what I was picking up um, intuitively, empathically as I was connecting to the collective cancer energy right now and what you guys have been experiencing probably for the past, um, I would say, what, four to six weeks for some of you guys. And there was some type of event, some type of tower moment, and I do remember it being in the reading that when we picked up your guys' energy before. Um, basically, um, the tower moment came, and it almost like, it was so, it was such a fast moving tower. It was unavoidable and it blindsided you like nobody saw it coming. Nobody saw it coming, like you just didn't see it coming and it totally blindsided you. But it was also triggering. So it really kind of like, at the, at the moment when it happened, it was so intense. You, it was almost like, you know, cognitive, cognitive dissonance kicked in and you just kind of like created almost like a fantasy escapism um, into some type of, no, that didn't really happen, a little bit of denial, but then it hits you like for real, for real, and you went into a little bit of foxholing and um, you're starting, you're starting to, some of you are starting to resurface and we're going to. Uh, look to the cards for that because I mean what's the basically what we've been doing is waiting for you guys to move out of that energy so that I have a different message to bring to you so I'm going to shuffle as we go through um, the housekeeping stuff if you guys want a personal reading um, reach out to me I have one more spot left for this week and part of the reason why your uh, reading it didn't come yesterday is because I had personals that I had to, that had come through after I did the Taurus <laughs> reading. Uh, yeah, you guys, wow, the Taurus reading. If you guys are caught up with this Taurus, because um, I definitely was picking up on something that was triangulated with Virgo, Taurus, Cancer energies, and I'm not sure how you guys fit into that, but crosswatch the Taurus if you're dealing with a Virgo because the Taurus is dealing with the Virgo or dealing with you directly, and then the Virgo or the Cancer is the third party energy, and there's some kind of telenovela drama playing out right there. I can't, like I can't even with Taurus right now. I don't know what the hell is going on with Taurus, but they, um, I'm not gonna let them hijack your reading. Just go watch the video. Um, so basically, um, with your guys' energies, um, I'll, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Housekeeping is where we're at right now. So I've said this before many times. If you guys don't know how I do my readings, these are the last couple of readings um, where I'm really going to do the housekeeping and kind of explain things. If you're new to the channel, you guys, there are videos, if you scroll down, that basically talk about the way, my process, how I do my readings, um, what some of the cards mean when I'm, I'm, when they show up in a reading as an intuitive empath rather than the traditional conventional right or weight interpretation. Um, and then I do a Celtic cross spread and then everybody talks about energy being dual. It's really polar, which is not the same as dual. Um, meaning that we all have masculine and feminine energies and sometimes one of those energies dominates in a, in a more um, prominent way into the situation. So it's important to understand that that you know, while you might primarily or predominantly 
identify with being the feminine energies that sometimes what's coming up in the reading isn't the he she aspect of the energy it's that you behaved in a masculine energy and your partner or counterpart in the reading or the cross watcher which we do get energy cards for them kind of present themselves in the feminine or sometimes they're both masculine energies and there's no feminine energy represented even though I still say he she okay so um, yeah okay so you guys are, are moving away from this energy star card out for you guys right out of the gates you still haven't made a decision yet though devil card energy is something that's still heavily in your mind this not mind but in, it's it's affecting your ability to balance your emotional self Okay, this isn't the basis of the situation, this is just in your deep emotional concerns, which means whatever attachment or bond that you've had with this situation or with this person has been greatly on your mind, like seriously. Oh my God, you guys. And this person has love bombed the hell out of you, but understand, look at, look at what's here in the back. The justice card is at the base of this situation for them. It came out first, which is why it's on the bottom. You've got the King of Cups and you've got the Knight of Cups for the Cross Watcher or the potential partner that you're dealing with or counterpart. And you've got the Page of Cups in reverse, okay? So really what you have here is someone who emotionally expresses themselves with a lot of energy and then emotionally restrains themselves. And then emotionally expresses themselves and emotionally restrains themselves. And it just seems like they're trying to play it off like their balanced energy emotionally and detached. So they come at you hard and then detach, come at you hard and then detach. And you guys are kind of going, what the hell is even going on here? What the hell is even going on here? Okay. Now, remember, Cancer, this could reflect your energy that you come full force and you invest. Something happens and there's some type of interaction. It could be ego Okay, because we've got the Five of Swords here, and sometimes this, for me, comes out in a reading as a one-up card. Um, it is in conjunction as an influencing energy with the Major Arcana card of the Star. It could be dealing with Aquarius. Virgo showed up in the reading. Lots of water over here, guys. Lots of water. Pisces, Cancer, Scorpio. Um, or also Taurus. Okay, so if you guys are involved in the third party and you're considering... Um, Choosing yourself versus choosing the Taurus. It looks like you guys have um, some answer cards coming forward here too. So here's what it is. You guys had a significant conflict and you or the other person were being overprotective with themselves. Okay. I don't want to say that this is you necessarily, Cancer, because at the basis of the situation... You've got the Ten of Wands. Okay, I've done three, four, five readings in between this reading and the Taurus reading. And guess what came out as the, at the base of the situation for that Taurus reading? Ten of Wands. Guess what came out in the Virgo reading for the partner's energy? Ten of Wands. Read the Virgo, or go watch the Virgo and go watch the Taurus videos too. I'm telling you what, there's some kind of sun sun going on here with Taurus, Virgo, and Cancers. And those were the three readings that Spirit had me hold off doing at the beginning of the month and I've been kind of chomping at the bit to get them out because it's like no people are going to be waiting for them spirit we got to put them out and I didn't get the release to give you guys the reading until now so something happened something happened between last month's reading for April the end of April love reading for Cancer Taurus and Virgo and then when I was told to do this reading something happened and it is like a big freaking deal, okay? Because you got the judgment card in the past situation in reverse, and we will get clarification. You've got the hermit in reverse energy um, in your headspace. When all of these major arcana cards come out and they're in reverse, and you have a lot of cards that are in reverse, these are your introspective cards, okay? This is, this is the universe telling you, go inside yourself, search yourself, search your truth, make a decision from there, okay? Make a decision when it's the hermit soul searching, it's soul search your masculine self. When it's the high priestess and it's in reverse and it's soul searching or use your intuition, it's use it from a feminine energy. This is telling you to use your masculine energy, which is go inside yourself and be more logical. Look at the evidence, review what has happened, keep your emotional self out of it, and draw a conclusion 
based on the facts. Okay, because this person over here, this person that you're dealing with, maybe trying to manipulate you. I don't see that. I just see them as, as um, like I said, like they just push-pull. You know, they come forward, they pull back, they come forward, they pull back. They emotionally express and then they restrain. Emotionally express and then they restrain. And sometimes these messages are immature and then sometimes they're, they embody like the king energy. So this person emotionally and maybe even what you might be picking up on psychically or intuitively is that this person's kind of like um, a little bit of a mess. I mean, that's how I would interpret it. What would cancer describe this person as? Hot and cold. Okay, I don't see necessarily cards that indicate that this person doesn't have, like, no air as far as, like, the swords are concerned here, as far as this person is concerned. It looks like whatever they're feeling is genuine at the time, but their feelings are all over the place, and it's like a roller coaster ride. Okay, that's what's coming through, is it's, it's literally playing out like a roller coaster ride, and you feel like, with this Justice card, for the balance that you want to have here and the stability that you want to have here, this, the Justice card has the blinders on which is why you're being um, instructed by the universe to go inside and soul search and, and use your intuition from a masculine perspective. Okay, so be logical, cut out your emotional self from it, okay, and, and think this through, Cancer. Think this through, all right, because you do have the devil card here. It is in the upright. You're concerned about this being um, the overall energy that whatever you're experiencing with this person might not be real, their emotions might not be real, there might be something illusionary going on. Um, you know, you feel bound to this person, why can't you leave them? What is this, am I addicted? You're asking yourself a whole bunch of questions. Okay, so logic is the key here. And you're, you're wondering, did they move away from you? Did I move away from them? Who's moving away from each other? Okay, and this is about emotional distance. Okay, because you can see um, depicted in the card that they're waiting for something. They're waiting for a response from you. You're waiting for a response from them. You guys are both kind of like in this energy where they keep making an offer and it's not re it recept that you're not receptive, or you keep making an offer and it's not recepted, or you know, like it's it's not received, or that it's received and then you feel rejected so there's some sensitivities going on because of the emotional aspect if you're dealing with another water sign you you guys have these sensitivities where you kind of you guys are just like it almost seems like they're pushing your buttons that's what's coming through yeah pushing buttons and triggering you and all kinds of stuff that just almost it's like you're not being yourself or you don't feel like you're being yourself or, you, or you're wondering if this person's being themselves because you're getting two, what seems two very different versions of this person's emotional expression, okay? And then you have the queen of pence in the desired outcome in reverse. Um, so when it comes to making a solid offer in the 3D realm, the queen of pentacles is gonna do that um, Passivity is coming through, so you're not you're you don't want a passive offer. You don't want this person to come. I mean, Cancer's a cardinal sign that's coming through. So really you're gonna respect someone who takes initiative and shows you in a very real way that you're valuable to them and that they that they want you. Okay, so you want a consistent show of interest and initiation from this person and you're not getting it right now. Okay, and here's the Eight of Pentacles. So you've been studying this, like in detail with the Hermit in Reverse up in the headspace, uh, coupled with this, and then the Nine of Cups also in Reverse in the future position means by the end of the month, you're gonna realize that, that, your, that your Nine situation isn't playing out as you thought it would, despite your best efforts. Okay, so let's go into the Clarity cards and get some elaboration on what all of this really means, okay? So what happened with this Five of Swords energy spirit? Ooh, that like flew all the way over here, excuse me. Um, <laughs> well, spirit, that's funny. The star card is clarified by the star card. <laughs> um, okay, so let's get more information from what the star card actually means. 
Um, no, actually, the Five of Swords is clarified by the Star card, but the Star card's already here. Okay, so you, you kind of have, like, I'm getting healing. You guys, you have to heal this energy, this influencing energy here with, with the Five of Swords. There was a little, little bit of a game of one-up, or there was a little cat-mouse strategy kind of thing playing out here, is what I'm getting, and you're trying to figure out what your next move is, okay? Or what their next move is gonna be so that you know how to counteract it, or like you're, you're trying to figure out what game they're playing so that you know what your strategy needs to be, okay? The point of the Hermit card with this is not to, not to figure out what game to play, but figure out what you really want. Okay, because that's why the judgment is here. You haven't made a decision. You're making decisions seemingly based on this the person's behavior. Okay, and you have to stand alone in the choice that you're making because it works best for you and then integrally represent that choice throughout no matter how this person acts. Okay, that's true independence. So this card represents here in the emotional place um, position that there's some unhealthy codependent behaviors taking place here. So you're making decisions based on what they're doing or they're making decisions based on what you're doing. Nobody's come to the center of their own truth and you guys are not operating out of your own truth. That is at the fundamental heart of everything that is going on with the two of you is there's games. Games, 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 and it's emotional games for them, and it seems like for you, it's about one-upping strategy game, about you know making something happen in the real world. So I'm not sure where this relationship is at or what kind of relationship it is. It could be online or some type of something like that. Yeah. So you guys are kind of sitting back, biding your time, because this is you have the Four of Swords with the Five of Swords. So you're waiting for them to make a move so that you can make a, a five of, of swords counter move with the one sword champion. Then you wait for them to make a move and then and then when they make a move, you kind of make a move, which is why you're getting this cat mouse push and pull from them. There seems to be a little bit of projection going on because you think it's this other person and really they've got all cups, including the justice card. You don't have any cups, Cancer, which is Kind of funny, you didn't even show up in your own reading. Okay, so why is the devil energy here for you guys? Okay, what is, what's going on with the devil energy? So let's get some clarifiers right now since we're talking about it. Um, Spirit, clarify the devil energy as far as what's going on with cancer. Seven of swords in reverse. Yeah, so you got the seven of swords here at the basis of the situation, seven of swords in reverse. So you guys are, are dipping into, like I said, that polarity. Them make a move, then you make a move. They make a move, then you make a move. And you're using your hermit energy to try to figure out what the best move to make to counteract their move. But nobody's making honest move towards anything real and you're scratching your head wondering why you're not getting real results in the relationship and you're not happy with the outcome. Okay, because that's what the Nine of Cups in reverse is saying. You're not happy with this outcome. Okay, so you're going back to the drawing board with the Ten of Wands and the Eight of Pentacles. You're going back to the drawing board. Let me look at this a different way. Let me figure this out, okay? But you haven't worked through the devil energy, which is finding your truth in all of this. And that's what the Hermit card is here to indicate, is that you need to find your truth in all of this. It's time to make a decision. This is the energy collectively that's been affecting everybody of any sign astrologically. The Judgment card has been here, and so is the devil energy. And you guys haven't worked through whatever your illusionary identity is, or the partner hasn't worked through their illusionary identity, which is why no real offer has been made by either of you, one of you, or one or the other of you. No real offer has been made, because you guys are still kind of playing games. Search yourself and see if that's true. See if you guys are playing games and you don't even know it. Like if you're not representing altruistically, genuinely and authentically your full and entire self, what are you doing? Overprotecting yourself with your ego. Okay? Two of swords. Stalemate. That's with this devil card here. Okay, so ten of wands energy. Clarifiers please, spirit. Yes. 
stalemate. You guys are standing staring at each other. You're trying to figure out what they're doing. They're trying to figure out why you're not doing. Here you go. Nine of Cups in reverse comes out again with this Ten of Wands energy. So basically what Spirit is saying is the cards are the cards are the cards are the cards, guys. There's really not a lot more to elaborate here. It's pretty plain. It's pretty clear. You guys are being called to make a decision and you're missing it or you're not seeing it or you're not uh, addressing it intuitively with your energy. You're not taking the correct action. You're not getting the results you're looking for because you're not taking the correct action. So you're going back to the drawing board to find out what the correct action is, but you're viewing the situation through your ego or through a, a veil of overprotection and spirit is like, Dip, ditch the veil. Ditch the veil, go inside and use this intuitive process to, to find out what you really want from a partner, what you really want from yourself, who you really are in a relationship. How do you want to express yourself in a relationship? Like just get crystal, crystal, okay? About what it is, who it is, how it is in the relationship. Oh my God, devil again. Like exactly, spirit is just like stop, stop taking more cards. Like there's nothing to clarify. This is the message. All right, so let's get some advice then. What is it that um, cancer is really... being stubborn or resistant about releasing that they really need to focus on. Okay, you need to find your sense of purpose. What's the point of the relationship and all of this emotional um, investment and emotional expense? Like, why are you going through this emotionally if it's not for some real sense of purpose? I know what I am here to do. So you guys need to get down to that and figure out, you know, what is, what's your role in all of this with this partner? How do you guys really fit together? What's the point? Okay. So it looks like if you guys have been dealing with somebody from the past or a past situation, the tower moment brought some hurt. You're still working through some grief, which requires forgiveness. So you guys have to choose forgiveness, not this little tit for tat game that you guys got going on. I understand that losing something is an opportunity to appreciate it. Okay, any more cards? Yeah, I'm getting a yes. More stuff that you guys are releasing, purging, and working through. Uh, lack of peace. Well, we've got that in, in spades here because we've got like swords and the devil card and, and introspective energy with the nine of cups in reverse. Of course, you guys are not at peace with the situation. How could you find peace? Okay, so what Spirit is telling me is the only way to rectify through the lack of peace and the anxiety that you guys are experiencing is to make a choice. You gotta make a decision. You have this codependent thought process where you're waiting for your partner to make the decision, but it's you that needs to make the decision. You need to decide what you want. Doesn't matter what they want until you know what you want. I am a being of love and I release all negative energy. Any more spirit? Okay, still more coming through for you guys. I keep staring at this Eight of Pentacles, so we're going to get some clarifiers and some messages for this Eight of Pentacles. Because I feel like the details that you guys are studying is not introspective self. self. Okay, there's a lack of acceptance of the person. No, of the behavior. Okay, there's some behavior that you're just not willing to accept here. But it's because you haven't forgiven it. Okay? Or your partner's not taking responsibility for it. So it could be a combination of both of your guys' egocentric processing that's not completed yet. I am learning to accept the things that I cannot change. Uh, that's, I'm getting that that's going to be, that's really the toughest energy for you guys right now. And then gratitude. Finding something in this person, in this relationship, in the connection or interaction to be grateful for despite the fact that you're dealing with the grief or whatever. So I feel like this is the emotional process, okay? So let's go back to the beginning and start all over. Okay, so your choice, okay, getting using the hermit energy and going introspectively is gonna help you uh, find your purpose or point of the whole relationship, connection, or interaction. You're gonna make a decision and, and uh, that's gonna be based on forgiveness, 
experiencing your peace will come as a result of making the decision because you've accepted what happened, you moved through that energy, released it, and now you have something to be thankful for. The entire process, lesson learned, and everything that goes along with it. Okay? I am thankful for this life and the opportunities that it presents. So that's how that plays out like that. So let's get spirit uh, eight of pentacles. So this is about apprenticeship. It's about learning. There's a lesson here that you're not seeing. So this is the deck. It's the Re Ganesha deck, which is the remover of obstacles. Um, yeah. Let's see what we got here. Aging. Two more. We're not going through them until all of them are on the table because aging by itself doesn't make sense because it's not about 3D aging. I feel like this card has a lot to do with accepting maturation and evolution. Okay, so that's the word that's coming through. Evolving, okay? Your soul is learning. Your spirit is awakening. Creative blocks. You guys have some creative blocks. And those, these cards over here represent some of what those blockages are, the emotional and spiritual blockages. So there's one more card, Spirit says, and then we'll go through them for the Eight of Pentacles energy. All right, Spirit, show us a card. Despair. Okay, I feel like you guys are, are experiencing a sense of despair, but the emotional response that you're giving to this is from an Im immature perspective because whatever this situation is, it's really a lot more simple. Okay, so this whole like drama type of emotional stuff that you guys are um, getting yourselves involved in, there's a meme going around right now on Facebook of this little kid holding onto a rope and he's like splashing around terrified. Um, in two feet of water and somebody comes over and you know solidifies his legs in the pool of water and he stands up and it's like instantly done and he's just like oh okay yeah cancer that's kind of you or it's this person over here you're so intensely engrossed in what's going on with you emotionally that you're you're likening it to despair or panic or anxiety and you're trying to work through those emotions um, particularly because we're talking about grief from whatever you don't want to accept about what happened between you and this person, you know, but I really feel like it's, it's causing some blockages for you to find a solution in this and causing you to revert back to some old unhealthy default behaviors that are causing problems for you. And then as a result, you are not able to reach out into this relationship or extend yourself into the relationship in a healthy way with a healthy give and take with your partner. Okay, so for whatever reason, for as much as you want it to be this person's responsibility and this person's initiative and everything like that, um, I think that you need to hear out this person um, because they have more emotional investment than you do is what it looks like here because I literally don't see any emotional investment on your part. There's no cups. There's no cups on your side of the reading and it is all cups for them. So we're going to get into what your partner or your counterpart is experiencing or per, perhaps the cross watcher, but not necessarily cross watchers understand that. Um, so we're going to get into that energy, but I'm going to read the cards for aging because this is really about evolution and maturation and get you the messages from these cards. Okay, so what's standing out for me is on the despair card. It says, open me to your highest plan. You guys are not representing your innermost truth and your highest and best selves, or your partner's not, okay? But just because I'm saying your partner isn't doesn't mean it's not you. And you guys know, as much as I would love to be one of those readers that's, that tells you what you want to hear all the time, I read the message from the cards because my heart is in helping and telling you something that isn't true isn't really going to help you grow. It's going to keep you right where you're at, interacting with people the way that you always have been 
and you're never going to extend yourself outside of your comfort zone and you're never going to mature and develop any better skills than where you're at right now. And to me, that's literally unacceptable to encourage in someone. I won't allow myself to be that person. I want to see people grow and I want to see them become the better version of themselves that they're either being led to do or being, you know, or feel like they desire to be. Okay. So I'm really a facilitator of that. You guys understand that the message for me never comes with any judgment. So if you feel anything trigger in you as a result of the message, please understand. I am literally just a messenger. I am a neutral party in all of this. And I really will see things from your perspective. Reach out to me at projectfevtarot at gmail.com. I have no problem empathetically seeing things from your perspective. I give neutral advice, though. So if you're looking for advice or a personal reading, understand that it's going to be very similar to this. I'm not going to tell you what you want to hear. I'm not going to tell you that you're right and your partner's wrong. I don't take sides. I'm neutral interest when it comes to spirit. I relay the message that's coming forward, and that's that. So as far as these creative blocks and working through these emotional energies, as much as they feel and, and you're experiencing them as intense, I really think that they're kind of misrepresenting themselves to you and you're deciding to ruminate on what they are instead of releasing them and making room for the newer healing energy. Okay, so um, open me to your highest plan and from the creative blocks card, I offer this for the highest good to benefit the planet. Release me from any blocks and restrictions. Okay, and I am filled with joy, energy, and beauty, a vessel for the divine. Those are the messages on those cards. I'm just checking back in with spirit specifically here, making sure I'm still in, in alignment. I felt a little shift in the energy there. What shifted? Some of you guys are second guessing something. Okay, you need, you do, you need a little positive reinforcement because this just is coming off as all somebody's wrong, somebody's bad, and that's really not, that's really not the message here, okay? Look at the bigger picture. Look at the bigger picture. Okay, so with this Eight of Pentacles, what that indicates is that you guys are paying attention to these little tiny details. See how he is with the pentacle at the apprentice card? Okay, he's learning how to replicate that, and he's looking at every tiny little detail, but he's looking at the details via candlelight. So not in the daylight, not in the light of day, not in the full light. He's looking at that in the dark. Okay, so it, you got to step back and really look at the bigger picture. Okay, and now we have a sacred geometry card. Crown chakra. Okay, here we go. You guys, you're, if you have a blockage with what's going on or a chakra to focus on, here's your advice. Sorry, my book is in this box and it is stuck. All right. Crown chakra is seven. Oh, wow. That is a strong spiritual number of completion. The frequency of the crown chakra, the violet flower of life, supports our spiritual connection to the universe and our ability to transmute negative energy into light. The flower of life is a geometric shape recognized by many cultures all over the planet. It consists of 13 equal circles that intersect at the middle of each circle, creating a perfectly proportioned flower. As a symbol, the flower of life represents the universe as a whole as well as the harmony in which all of the separate components of the universe work together. All right, so we've got a few cogs out of sync, out of alignment, which is why there's a lack of peace. Okay, so your emotions are being felt so intensely that it's throwing all of your balance and alignment off. Okay, so it's not your throat chakra that you need to utilize. You don't need to talk this through anymore. 
You need to go introspectively, do the soul searching. Utilize the crown chakra. Okay, because it activates our sense of empathy and unity. And it's associated with the violet flame, the flame of transmutation. It's an alchemical color of utilizing this intense emotion that you're experiencing. And remember on the beginning of the reading, I said it's not duality. They're not separate entities. Good and bad are not on two different sides of anything other than the same coin. And good and bad is perceptive, but positive and negative is energy. So when we talk about energy, we're talking about polarity, we're talking about attracting forces, or we're talking about repulsion forces. We attract or repel based on what is emanating into our auric field centered from our heart chakra. In order to refocus and realign our pillar with our heart chakra in alignment with all the others, crown chakra has to be active. So this is about finding your truth. It is associated with our personal spiritual connection to the universe and source, your personal truth. The, uh, the flame of transmutation, the violet flame, burns away all negativity and transmutes it into light. Okay, Purification, magic, mystery, and mysticism. So try this, it says. Close your eyes, take a slow deep breath, get into the thought and feeling that you are infinitely connected to the wisdom of the universe. Make time to get out of your mind on a regular basis to expand your awareness. So if you don't meditate, meditate. If you don't listen to frequencies, listen to frequencies. Find something to get out of this headspace because it's causing you to be hyper, super focused in a very obsessive way and make your behavior so overprotective that nobody can even get you to respond in a healthy emotional give and take, okay? Or this is happening with your partner. So let's do that. Let's go to the partner energy now. Let's get some clarifiers for, okay, so the, the justice card came out as the bottom card in the basis of their situation. So let's get some clarifiers for justice. What does justice mean for them? Because cancer's still in the judgment phase of this process. Clarify justice. All right. We've got the Nine of Swords and the Nine of Wands. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. So what I'm getting from this energy for the cross watcher for your, your counterpart cancer is that they have taken action. They have. They've taken action towards you. They've come forward. And the reason why it seems like they're coming forward is because when people come forward or make a move or take initiative in a relationship, if it's not responded to in like or reciprocated, in like or acknowledged in like then that person kind of stops what they're doing to assess your level of interest okay nobody's going to come barreling at you and really you don't want a psychopath coming barreling at you despite the fact that you're like no 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 when when you do this kind of thing then this person's going to back off so it's pretty unfair to look at the situation, which is why the justice card is here. It's pretty unfair to look at this person and go, well, they come forward and then they back off. And then they come forward and then they back off and it's flaky and it's push-pull energy and it doesn't really show any consistency. It, it looks like they are, okay? I'm just going to be honest with you guys. It looks like they've made a lot of effort here, okay? They've made a lot of effort and it looks to me like they're feeling a bit rejected, but their emotional investment isn't off the table, okay? So let's clarify the King of Cups energy, please, Spirit, for this person. King of Cups energy for the counterpart of Cancer. Oh, we almost had a popper there. What's going on with that? Here it is. Queen of Cups! <laughs> 
You're, if you're the female, this is your counterpart. If you're the male, this is your counterpart. If you're male or male, this is your counterpart, okay? So this person knows that you're the one. This is, this is who they want. They, and they have worked hard at this. They've put a lot of effort and energy into this. Oh my God, and the three of, three of pentacles, three of coins, out here with the knight of cups. This is coming, coming in as three times. They've offered you something solid and have shown you emotional stability and offered you something solid. Three times they've come forward and they've been, I don't know, rejected on some level. Chance card. This must be like the Wheel of Fortune. So right now, it just doesn't look like they're willing to risk it again on you. So if they're not coming forward again and they're not chasing, that would be why. That would be why. They're not chasing because in their mind, with their experience, what's happened is, is they've come forward three separate times on three separate occasions, made an effort, and in their mind, it was a considerable effort. Now in your mind, what you consider the Nine of Swords, Nine of Wands energy to be might be very different. Are you communicating that in a healthy way? Or are you five of swords deviling the heck out of that and making this person guess and try to figure it out? Because it looks like they've tried. Why aren't you happy here? Or maybe it's just you're not happy and it has nothing to do with this other person. You're just not happy. Are there any other clarifiers? Okay, no. So. Message for Crosswatcher. Okay, advice card for Crosswatcher. What can you do to help the situation the best way possible? Okay. Look at two cards came out. 21 and 13. We've got coherence and divine feminine. You guys, maybe that's what's at play here. You're in a twin flame paradigm and you guys are doing the, you know, you've been doing the running, but it's been kind of initiated from this energy here. And you're concerned maybe that they're not gonna come back for you because you've done too much. And I don't know, divine feminine energy. What's going on here? Let's see. Three-dimensional reality is based on the duality between opposites and their eternal movement. Torrid. Toward, sorry. Toward, toward union. Everything is created in pairs. Male, female, matter, spirit, empty, full, dark, light. Okay, so I have a little bit of an issue with this right now. I'm reading from the book, but in my estimation, we have evolved as a collective to understand that they're not two separate entities, the light and the dark, same energy, okay? Think of it this way. When does the sun stop shining? It doesn't. So why does the other side of the earth get dark? Because the earth is moving. It has nothing to do with the light of the sun. The sun does not change. The earth spins or rotates and moves around the sun. Okay, so the sun is the constant and the light and dark does not, there's no duality in that, okay? It's all parts of the same planet. It all has to do with each other and it runs in cycles. That's life. That is life. And it needs to be because that is the aspect of the polarity that generates energy. So if you guys watch the Science of Spirit um, video that I posted, it talks about how electromagnetic energy is generated by atomic movement back to the original position. That's when the energy is created, okay? Not before then, the energy is exerted and it takes a lot more energy ex exerted to get back to the original position, but that original position point is when the energy is released, okay? So it's stored up until then and then released. That's an important understanding to have when you're talking about relationship dynamics because if your auric field has any negative dense energy like grief, um, a lack of gratitude, which is uh, despair, anything like that, creative blockages, it's going to, it's going to repel the opposite.
Okay, and it's it's not going to be attracted to that. Okay, because the the um, attraction factor doesn't doesn't. I want to say that it doesn't work that way, but I don't think I'm explaining that very well. So that's why I have a little bit of an issue with this, is because we've evolved beyond that to understand that it's all one and the same. It's non-dual, okay? Particularly when we're talking about things that are linear, it's non-dual. So without the tension caused by the magnetic push and pull of duals, there would be no movement. So there you go. That embodies what this is, okay? You guys are generating energy but how are you, it's not about the generation of energy and the intensity of the emotions that are being experienced. It's what are you guys choosing to do with the fact that that's happening? Okay, so two people get together and they do all kinds of moving around. Doesn't always generate energy. So why do we feel connected in a way that we feel bonded to somebody? We do all of this movement and go through all of this motion and we collectively learn how to collaborate with each other to transmute that energy into something tangible and linear in the 3D where there's growth in the relationship, evolution in one or both of the people. Um, you guys actually like write a book together or work on a project together. Okay, it's cooperation where two or more are gathered. Okay, and when you guys have that kind of connective energy, if you let it build without an outlet because there's blockages that aren't being released or purged or worked through by the individual, then that creates what we see here playing out in the relationship, push-pull dynamic. Push-pull dynamic, something's gotta give. Okay, so coherence, let's go to 13. This is a new card for me, I haven't read this before. So let's see what this is. The frequency of coherence supports our ability to harmonize the frequency of the heart with the frequency of the mind for an optimal ability to create the reality that we desire. You guys, we already talked about this literally, like it came up in a message in spirit about the heart chakra and you guys are being encouraged to um, acknowledge that, that cancer still needs to do some work with the crown chakra. Coherence can be described as a state of harmony, union, or connection. In the new energy, and as a reference to human being, coherence has to do with a state in which the mind and the heart harmoniously flow together. So this is why we see this. Cancer, your heart and your head are not on the same page and your heart didn't even show up in the reading, which means you guys are hyper-focused on what's going on in the head space. But the head space is just as spiritual a space as the heart space is. Okay, that's why the hermit card and the hermit energy is here in support, because really that's what it is. Anything that you feel pressed to do and it has to take priority is the universe working itself in your situation and it's being divinely guided. That's good news. Don't you want to hear that you're being divinely guided to go introspectively to work out whatever it is mentally that you need to process and purge and release so that you can have healing and re -ed, you know, reinvest yourself into the relationship as a better, healthier version of, of yourself? I would think so. I would think so. So whether you're functioning as an individual community or a group, the new energy is asking us to find balance between our thinking and our feeling. Okay, so that's maybe what's going on here is you you know you're you're being pushed by the divine to use logic. I think I said that at the beginning of the the reading. Some things come back to me, some things don't, you guys, because it's not me speaking. It's not really my message, so I don't always understand or um, I don't always recall the beginning. But I do think that we talked about that that you guys are having to use logic to make this decision and not your emotional self. And maybe you guys are just struggling through the process a little bit because your emotions are so intensely felt right now with the despair and the grief, and it's hard to process through those and think logically when you're, when you're feeling that way. To be powerful manifestors, it is imperative to not only set clear intentions with our mind, but to have our emotional state of being with the heart at its center in alignment as well. I think we talked about alignment too. I've been doing um, daily, the daily vibe is about the energy collectively for the day that's gonna be influencing us and how to use that to your benefit. To maintain and reestablish alignment when we get out of focus, when we get out of place, when we're bumped out of place by an interaction or a trigger. Um, utilizing that energy in that reading is a quick five to 10 minute video, so it's really tangible to you know listen to you in your drive to work and you know get, get a message from spirit first thing in the morning about how to realign yourself and understand what energies you're gonna be coming up against today. And the reason why it's important to have some previous knowledge of that for the day is because 
you can go in not only prepared but aware okay so you might not be able to prevent any of those energies from activating or triggering but when they get when you do get triggered by those energies you can go aha okay I knew this was coming this is my opportunity to use spirits message to realign myself and establish presence that will maintain your focus so you don't get lost in your emotional self but you don't get lost in your head either okay so that you maintain your balance in both of those all right, so that's your May love reading, you guys. I hope that it resonated with you guys and was helpful. If you want a personal reading, reach out to me at projectfebtarot at gmail.com. I have one more spot open for the week. And uh, whoever wants it, first come, first serve. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys, for being here. Like, subscribe, as always. Notification bell if you want uh, you're, to get notified of new uploaded content for the month. All right, namaste.